Psalm 118, verse 24, we'll read it together. After two, one to go. This is the day the Lord has made, and so, and so, we will rejoice, and, and so, you see, any day you find yourself depressed, it is because you've not accepted that you should rejoice. For when you woke up, it is because God wanted you to see a new day. He is the creator of every new day. Listen to me. Somebody went to Tower Bridge. And when he got to Tower Bridge, he has a wife and two children. But he told himself, I've been so frustrated. Things are so bad. I'm not passing my exams. And so I'm just going to end it. He doesn't know how to swim. So he said when he got to Tower Bridge, he would just jump. He got there. He left all the way from Hackney. God ensured that he got transport from Hackney to Tower Bridge. He didn't tell his wife. He didn't tell his children. When he got there, he looked over the water. He saw that, you know, some people have height problem. He said, this one, I can't jump. <laughs> and he went back home. He could have died that day. Suicide. Hell straight because of the problem. But later on, he got saved. He was in church. He was doing things for. But you see, that day he decided to die. He forgot is the day God has made, and he should rejoice. Look at somebody say rejoice. Rejoice every day you wake up because it's God, not your money. It's God, not your status. It's God that made you to wake up and he has something that should make you rejoice. And that's why in a new beginning, listen, every day is a new beginning. Yesterday is gone. Every day is a new beginning. There was a day Moses woke up and he went to the backside and, and there was fire. He said, what's happening? The fire was burning, but the bush wasn't burning. It was the day for a new beginning with him. And he was 80 years old. There was a day Isaiah had been prophesying like people in church. You send text to A, you send text to B. You know, you read something, you are glad. Something happens, you are sad. But the Bible says, and God opened the heavens and made him see. God is right there. And angels are there. And then God said, Isaiah, you've been talking rubbish. Your tongue is not sweet. It needs cleansing. And the Bible says, an angel took a coal of fire and put on his tongue. And he was cleansed. When God said, whom shall I send? He said, here I am. The day of new beginnings. Isaiah had been a man of God but not knowing God enough. That was his own day of new beginning. There was a day Jeremiah was complaining. Look at the person by you, say, stop complaining. Say, start rejoicing. Jeremiah was complaining, look at me, look at where I am. I am down. I am in the pit. And God came to him. God said, Jeremiah, listen, I've been waiting for you to pray. If you pray, I would show you great and mighty things. Jeremiah said, eh. So you've been waiting for me to pray. You have great things to show me, but you are telling me to pray. That was the day of new beginnings. So that from that day, Jeremiah would say, whatever happens, I know there is a better tomorrow. I will stop complaining. It was a day of new beginnings. There was a day Peter went to work. And he walked and walked and walked, and there was no profit. He didn't catch any fish. And in the morning, because he fished throughout the night, I've told you that before. I told you I used to be a fisherman, so you ought to know. And um, he came back, sat down, was not washing his net. Jesus came by. Jesus said, Hello, Peter. You know, at least Peter answered. He didn't say, Today, no money, no product. Nothing. Peter said, yes, Jesus, what can I do for you? Jesus, can I borrow your boat? Okay, borrow it. 
by the time Jesus borrowed the boat and finished the salmon, salmon on the mount, Jesus said, throw your net on this side. Peter said, see, you are not a fisherman. Let me tell you how good I am. Even though today I had zero. He said, I don't, we've tried all night. We caught nothing. Jesus said, throw it. When he threw it, there was so much fish. Now listen. Some people have been led astray because of the goodness of God without repenting for God. When Peter saw all the fish, a normal person would be happy. I can take to my wife. In fact, she would dance because there is no fish. Peter said, depart from me for I am a sinner. I have, depart from me. You are a holy man. I am a sinner. That was the day, a new day for him because that day Jesus said, you will stop catching fish, which you would eat and sell and make money. And when you die, you will leave the money for those alive. But from today, you start catching men, which you will see forever and forever and forever. And they will be your sons and your daughters. So you would have an eternal reward because this day is a new day. A day of new beginnings for Peter. A day of new beginnings for Paul. Very difficult. Putting men in prison. Putting women in prison. He said, I had power. I have authority. I have position. I can get to 10 Downing Street. I can talk to that MP. In fact, I have so much money, I can say anything anywhere. All right. Instead of going on the road, I'm going to do more. Not for God, for self. But Jesus knocked him down. Look at somebody say, you need to be knocked down. <laughs> Jesus knocked him down. Some people, some people are too proud. They can't be knocked down. Wait until an angel slaps you. <laughs> or wait until a demon knocks your head. <laughs> then you will know that you are nothing. <laughs> but it's Jesus that knocked him down. And when Jesus knocked him down, he said, who are you? Jesus said, I am Jesus. Ah. Whom you have been persecuting. What do you want me to do? I won't even tell you. Since you don't listen to people, I'm going to send somebody to tell you. I'm going to send somebody you hate to tell you. Ananias, go and tell him. It's Ananias that came to tell him what his life should be. Do you know that some people you don't want to listen to, they have the key to your progress. When you don't accept the teacher God has placed in front of you, whether that teacher is your boss, whether that teacher is your parent. How many of us argued with our parents? If your hand is down, you need deliverance. <laughs> All children argue with their parents. Say, no, mom, no, you know. And yet, your dad and your mom, when you were six, seven, eight, nine, ten, God placed them there to take care of you. But we argued with them. We thought we knew more. And you filled with distinction until you repented. And that was a new beginning for Paul. You know Jonah's new beginning? Prophet Jonah. He had intelligence. He had brains. He could hear God. Like many people in church today who could hear God, but they would go against God. They could hear God. God said, Jonah, arise and go to Tash. He said, God, I know I have heard you. You are telling me to go to Tash. So that, I mean, go to Nineveh. I have heard. I know you. You want to save them. But listen, God, I equally have a will. I'm going to Tash. And he paid with God what God gave him. And he was on the boat. When God did the boat, gave the boat some swinging. The guy was sleeping. Are you surprised that sometimes some terrible people are sleeping when, the time, when, when you, the Christian, you are shaking? Man, wake up. We have called on our gods and it's not answering. We're about to die here. What about you? Call on your God. He said, don't worry. I'm the troublemaker. At least he was humble enough to say so. Some of us are not humble to admit our faults. We can't say, I am sorry. Look at the person by you. Say, is he talking about you now? 
<laughs> we, we don't say, I am sorry. We are too big to say, I am sorry. We don't say it, and trouble continues. So Jonah said, throw me, throw me down. Uh, you know, before Jonah thought it, God had already known it. So you know what God did? God just said, big fish, go by that boat. Just stay there. As soon as they throw Jonah down, just open your mouth, do, oh, swallow him. And so the fish swallowed Jonah. Listen to me. The way of the backslider is hard. For 24 hours, Jonah did not repent. 48 hours, Jonah did not repent. He was in the belly of the fish. He should have died. But he was still saying, God, I don't care. And how many people in church say that? They know they are in the wrong. But they would still be saying, I don't care. And they know that, and the Spirit of God will be saying, look, look, this is the way out. You don't have peace. You don't have joy. You don't have truth. You are suffering. I don't care. Have you seen some children do, I don't care? Ah, but I don't, you know why they do it? They've seen mommy and daddy do it before. Look at the person by you, say, he's talking about you now. <laughs> you know, Jonah said, I don't care. When he should have been rotting inside the fish's belly. You know some evil things should have happened, but they are not happening. Because of your stubbornness. Because of your intransigence. You know, and yet. The Bible says, it's the third day. Jonah said, I think I've troubled myself enough. He said, oh God. Oh God, have mercy. Oh, God, have mercy. And I like God. God doesn't change his mind. The Bible says he took the fish to throw him at the shore of Nineveh. When Jonah came out of the belly of the fish with all the slime around him, prophet with slime. <laughs> That's why he preached like no man preached. When you read it in the Hebrew, you know what Jonah said? Three days destroyed. Three days destroyed. Three days destroyed. <laughs> the guy was an angry preacher. <laughs> but at least he preached the word. <laughs> but that was the day of his new beginning. He saw another side of God. A new beginning. Every day is a new beginning. I've showed you Moses at 80. Jonah at 30 something. Jeremiah at about 25. Samuel, the day of his new beginning, is the day he missed God's voice for Eli's voice. But eventually, Eli could tell him, That's not my voice, that's God's voice. There are some of us, God, have been talking to, you've been mistaking it. But the day you now say, Ah, it's God. That's the day of a new beginning. You start hearing God. You start understanding God. You start cherishing God. That's why as we look at a new beginning for me, say that with me, a new beginning for me. Say it again, a new beginning for me. One more time, a new beginning for me. God has not finished with you. That's why I created this day that you may be glad and rejoice because there is a new beginning with you. Between you and God, a new beginning. And we are going to look at Genesis chapter 12. I want to pick up a man that had a new beginning and what God said. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country and out from your family and from your father's house. To a land I would show you. I would make you a great nation. You get out so as to get in. You get out so that you can become great. Until you live where you ought to live, you cannot become, you cannot enjoy God's appointment and promotion. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. Listen, I will bless you. That means all the blessings Abraham had were not from God. It was self. He worked very hard. He had servants. He had a wife. He had maids. Listen, 
They were not the blessings of God. The blessings of God make rich without any sorrow. Abraham had sorrow, but he, he had blessings. There is the blessing from God. There is the blessing of your hand. There is the blessing of your parents. There is the blessing of your boss. But if God has not blessed you, you are as poor as a church rat. Find out God's blessing. And I will bless you and I will make <clears throat> your name great. And you would be a blessing. Verse 3, and I'll bless them that bless you. And I'll curse him who curses you. And in you will all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4, and Abraham departed. Your blessing comes when you obey God. Personally, privately, and promptly. You obey God promptly. Departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haram. He was 75 when he first heard the voice of God. Three things about Abraham. Number one, if you pick a man at 75, how many more years does he have? Couldn't we have said, why don't we pick somebody at 22? Why don't we pick somebody at 16? God has not finished with anybody. As long as he makes you wake up, you can have a new beginning. 75. Number two, we know that the wife was barren. God, why are you picking a barren woman? You said in him will all the families of the earth be blessed. He's not only barren, they have tried and tried and tried and they didn't succeed. It's not that they have not tried. And when somebody is 75... Let me tell you, libido has gone down. The woman herself will just feel, well, it's over. When you say it's over, until God says it's over, it's not over. You must find out what God is saying. You are picking a man to make him a springboard, to be a blessing to everybody from the Arctic to the Antarctica. From the east to the west, from the north to the south. And yet he is barren. It's because God can do all things. Number three. When God spoke to Abraham, he was serving idols. He was an idolater. He wasn't serving God. Maybe he was bowing down to the moon. Like in this country, they bow down to the moon before the Romans and then the Greeks brought Christianity to this country. They worshipped stones. They worshipped wood. Have you not heard of Mr. Wood? Mr. Stone? What do you think Stonehenge is all about? It's the place of worship. They were worshipping stones. And they worshipped the moon and the stars. Civilization grew without God. So Abraham was an idol worshiper. He was an idol worshiper. He was an idol. But that day was a day of new beginnings when God showed up and God called him by his name. God knows your name. God knows your address. God knows your age. God knows your internal constituents. And he knows the challenges you have. But all that, don't, don't bother God because he has a new beginning for you. Can somebody say good amen? amen? So here was an idolater. Idolater. Idol worshiper. Today, what idols do we worship? What idols do Christians worship? What idols do unbelievers worship? Because in Joshua chapter 24, verses 2 and 3, it tells us that Nahor, the father of Abraham, was actually worshipping demons. So Abraham grew up worshipping demons. But God, the holy God and the only creator and redeemer, said, my eyes are on him. Say to somebody, God's eyes are on you. And so even though you worship false gods or you had generations worshiping false gods, God so loved you that he decided to take you up. That's what God did. 
And today we have idols of social media. Some people would not in any one hour not watch social media. Even when they read the Bible in the morning before they go to work, one hour after their quiet time, they have forgotten all God impacted them through their quiet time. They have forgotten it. But they remember, and they would always go back to social media, social media, until social media controls them. Controls their vision, controls their thoughts, controls their words, controls their actions, controls their reactions, not the Holy Spirit. Because of an addiction to social media. I mean, people in church. Some people are addicted to money. Don't worry. Next month, we're dealing with financial wisdom, and I'm going to surprise you on what God has said about money. And I want to take some of you that are on 40,000, take you to 70,000, take you to 80,000 in three years. We would. But your, but your eyes should not be on money. See if he first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and what? All. He knows what you need. He knows what you need. Last week when we finished, we went on visitation, myself and my wife. And we got somewhere... And I was chatting with one young man. He's ha he has a child. And listen, child in nursery is 1,600 pounds. 1,600. And I looked at the wife. I saw that she's a bit rotund. You know what that means? Another baby is on the way. So with that, when that baby comes, it's going to be 3,200 for a month. That's minus mortgage. How much is he earning? How can he plan for tomorrow? How can he plan for tomorrow? And give those children an investment in life, a legacy that can make him stand. I said, listen, we're having financial wisdom seminars and that, that, that. We began to talk. And that's what I want to do with some of you. So that you would have money, you would be able to take care, and yet money would not be your master. You cannot serve God and mama. You won't serve money, but money will come, and you look at it, and you say, yes, it's there. And you are not poor. Because God, listen, the Bible says the rich and the poor, God made them all. So why are you staying inside of the poor? It's either you are ignorant, you have no vision, you don't know your opportunities, or you are not taking responsibility. Those are the issues. And we're going to show you how to get out of being a mediocre to somebody who can talk. Money gives you leverage everywhere. Money gives you leverage everywhere. You can get to places where the poor cannot get to. Money would open doors. But don't let money rule your heart. So there is the idol of money. There is the idol of fashion. Yesterday, I sat down somewhere. I was enjoying myself. The way some people walked in, they wanted everybody to know that I am around. You know? Yeah. And they were walking and I was looking at them. And I, I made sure I sat in one corner where they wouldn't see me. I really sat in one hidden corner. So when they come in, they look. They wouldn't know I'm there. And they just walk. And I looked at them. Listen, maybe you haven't seen what I have seen. I've been to the mortuary. In the mortuary, there are no decent clothes. Every human being removed the clothes. What are you proud of? That you must walk as if Nice clothes are good. God wants you to be acceptable. God wants you to be appreciated. God wants you that when he looks at you and men look at you, they, but please don't show off because of who God has made you. Don't because you are beautiful condemn those who are less beautiful. Don't because you are tall look down on those who are short. You want to knock their heads like the bully in primary school. No, thank God for who you are. And thank God for every other person. 
So some people's idol is their physique. It's their physique. It's their fashion. It's their money. It's their self-elevation. Some people's idol is sports. I didn't even know that there was semi-final. When I was coming back, I was in the train, and somebody came in, phoning another person. Ah, we lost by one nil. Ah! <laughs> and I don't know who played or who did not play, but the thing was getting angry to that. We lost by one nil. One nil. One nil. We lost by one nil. Oh, boy, you are in the train. They are not paying you 30,000 30, a month. The people playing, they pay them 30,000, League 2. If you're in Premier League, you earn a minimum of 150,000 a week. This one in the train, if you are earning 150,000 a week, you will be taking Super Uber. You won't be taking train. And you are killing yourself over, we lost, we lost, and you are getting angry. I, I grew up. <laughs> Sports. Sports is the idol of some, even preachers. Preachers. The Holy Spirit will be saying, go and pray. Uh, after 10 minutes, how much? Watch that one. Uh, who wants to score? <laughs> he missed it. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost is saying, go and pray. And sometimes the Holy Ghost doesn't talk to a preacher for one month. He doesn't talk. He doesn't say, talk, pray about this person in your church. Pray about this person in your church. Pray about the Holy Ghost just keeps quiet. You are the physical leader. Listen, that preacher is like Saul. When David was anointed king, as far as heaven was concerned, David was king. Saul was no more king. But Saul, Saul was still ruling Israel. Are you still ruling your home without God? Because God has stopped talking to you. Find out why. You are the head of the home and God is not talking anymore to you. He has, the last time he talked to you was nine months ago. And that's when you sought him. There was a freshness. There was a need. You enjoyed praises. Without choir, you praised, you praised, you praised. You danced. You know, you read the Bible. The Bible, God's word was real juice to you. Now you only read it as routine. And so he has stopped talking. You know what? He has, God has been replaced and displaced because that is your idol. There's nothing wrong with sports. But the idols of today, the idols of today. And God saw Abraham, 75, worshiping idols. And God said, Abraham, come over. Come over. Did you notice, listen to me, when Peter and his brother, Andrew, did not catch any fish and they walked throughout the night. They were not praying. They were washing their nets. They are more interested in their human effort than what God could do. They, they were Jews, but they didn't pray. They didn't say, God, what went wrong? We worked so hard, we caught nothing. I have a wife. She's expecting fish. And plenty of fish, the one we will eat and the one we will trade by butter so that we can get bread and get other things. Because that's what you do those days. You trade what you have to get what you don't have. And the wife was staying at home not knowing that nothing was coming. Are you a wife and you've discovered that your husband is not as responsible as he should be? Because he's not praying and you also, you are not praying. And you are just depending on the arm of the flesh. I am glad you are in church today. A new beginning to show you there is a way out. Because since he made this day that you should rejoice, you rejoice because you hear the truth. You rejoice because you take the truth seriously. You rejoice because God loves you and so he tells you what he wants. Look at the person by you say, congratulations for coming to church. So here was Abraham at 75, an idol worshiper. Yet... This is the day God reached out to him and said, Abraham, come out of this people, all of you worshiping idols. Come out of this place where the altar is an altar of Satan, even though you don't say it. Listen to me. If in your house you don't really pray, 
it is demons and the devil that are there. So the altar there, you don't call it altar. You call it the dining table. You call it the bedroom. You call it the kitchen. They are all altars of devils. Because you only say things that the devil will say. But God is good. All the time God is good. He went and spoke to Abraham and got him out. Number two, he knew that Abraham and the wife, both of them were barren. It wasn't only Sarah that was barren. Abraham also was, for a long time, was barren. Yes, after some time he had Ishmael. But he could not produce. There was no future. There were women, maids. There were trained soldiers. Physically, that guy was well-to-do. Because he had a, a number of people he was caring for. Abraham was a hard worker. He was a visionary. He thought of tomorrow. And so he knows he must have people. And those days, listen, you only gain territory by war. And that's why Abraham trained his people. So he, he, as, we come, as we increase, and this house cannot take us. You know, in this country, something that is always selling is property for sale. For sale. Because you are either upscaling or you are downscaling. That's the thing. So Abraham said, as the family is increasing, all these my servants are having children. You had better train the men for war so that we go and war. And when we conquer, we take more because uh, we cannot be constrained inside one room. The guy was visionary. The guy wasn't, but without God. Yet, God looked at him and said, you are my choice. You are the choice of God. You are the choice of God. You are the choice of God. And that's why God came to him and spoke to him. Barren. Barren. Today, what do we find? We find people who are barren of truth. They don't know the truth. They have believed lies. Where do lies come from? The media. Half truth. One quarter truth. Distorted truth. Or plain lies that they would couch with nice philosophy and diplomacy. And sometimes it's only three years later you discover that they were lies. But in those three years, you have already lost so much. Only what God says is truth. Because the man, even science, science doesn't have truth. Truth is fixed forever. Science is improving. And we thank God for its improvement. But don't take science as truth. It's improving. And we appreciate the improvement. It's where medical science. We, we appreciate the advancements it has got. But have you not heard? A junior doctor has to spend 70 hours every week. 70 hours is a long time. No wonder they forgot cutting wool inside a woman that they operated upon. It wasn't intentional. It wasn't intentional. And it took two years later that the word of God came and said, I've been having stomach problem. Hey, MRI and CT did not see it. I've been having stomach problem. The word of God came and said, hey, woman, go to the toilet. Go and do the right thing. And coming out of her was cutting wood that was left in the operating room. Not that the doctors are wicked. Have you not had doctors feeling sleepy while doing operation? Because they, it, it's sometimes too long hours, too long. So don't condemn them. If you want to condemn them, ask yourself, have you never been tired? So they don't have truth. Truth is what God says. About this time tomorrow, the famine would go and there will be surplus. That's God. That's God. Go to the brook and I will feed you there. In the wilderness, who would feed me? Don't worry. Every day, six days a week, there will be manna coming down from heaven. Who prepared it? 
Where was the store? Amazing did not have the store of heaven to give to 700,000 people every day for 40 years. And it was pure. No mold. Perfect. That's God. That's truth. Because he said, I will take care of you. That's truth. And there was none feeble among them. What? 40 years. Nobody feeling sick. Nobody. No child. No couple. Women. No paracetamol. What's the one higher than paracetamol? Uh -huh. Koda, they are all malls. Koda mall. <laughs> nothing. 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 For not one year. 40 years. Nothing. Because God was the doctor. They didn't go on roads like our roads. Dusty, cobbled, but he made sure not one of them kicked a stone, for he gave his angels charge concerning them, lest they dash their foot against the stone. That's our God. That's our God. That's our God. So, you see, truth is only what God says. How many of us have discovered that the truth we are taught in the university has now been debunked? Philosophies, we have gone from Socrates to Plato, and now we are going on to other things because they have now seen that by research, those things were flawed. And that's why when you don't have God's word, you believe him with a lie. God. And these people were barren of truth. Barren of truth. They, they were barren. They were barren of truth. Barren of eternal life, even though they worshipped idols. Barren of grace. Listen, barren of the love of God. Barren of the love of God. Listen, there is nothing like, I want to tell you this, there is nothing like you just sitting down and God tells you something and just there you begin to laugh. You are just laughing. And somebody, maybe your husband or your wife, or your children come, ah, mommy, is there anything? You just say no. But mommy, we had you laughing. Was somebody on the phone? You say no. It was just because God shared something with you, the joy of the Holy Spirit. Oh, you, 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 you know, you are not yourself. And you can't buy that with a million dollars. The joy of the... And many people are barren of the joy of the Holy Spirit. You have wife, you have... But barren of the joy of the Holy Spirit. And yet, God said... I have seen you don't have joy of the Holy Spirit. I've seen you are barren of truth. You are worshiping devils. You are not worshiping me. I have seen you are barren of the blessings of the Lord. But from now, I will bless you. That's why it was a day of new beginning for Abraham. An idolater, worshiping whatever. Listen, anything more important than God is your idol. Anything more important than God is your idol. If God says, go and do this, and you tell God, after five minutes, you are slow in obeying God. Whatever is keeping you there, holding your attention, keeping you, that's your idol. That thing is more important than God. Barren of the love of God. You know, this morning we were sharing, and somebody said, I slept well. Say, uh, how do you know you slept well? Said, because God cuddled me. Hey, how many of you have cuddled children before? Little children. And you know that you cuddle them, that little bundle of joy. You call him bundle of joy, but it is a diaper <coughs> who is a viper. Because every child not born again is a viper, even though he's having diaper. But by your training, by your prayers, by your teaching, by your definite 
very definite that I'm going to get this child to be born again. Yes, he will go from being a viper to a beloved of the Lord. So that's the responsibility of a parent, not Sunday school teacher. Sunday school teacher, two hours a week. No, parent, you are in. You know, God said, that's the man. Let me end up with this. He was 75 years old. And when you are 75, I can tell you, you can't run fast. The bones will start saying, I am old. Climbing steps, you will say, "Um, please, slow down. So God saw a man who is down physically. He had spent a good part of his life and he should be slowing down physically. Weak bones. Weak bones. There is almost nobody who is above 70 who is not on one medication or the other, especially in Europe, America, Australia. Almost nobody above 70 because we don't eat well. And we exercise too little. And here was Abraham, 75. So his bones will be telling stories. But God said, I know you are old. Your body tells you you are old. But I'm going to have a new beginning with you. I will bless you. And in you will all the families of the earth be blessed. Yes, there will be people that will rise to curse you, but when they curse you, I will curse them. Never think there are no enemies around you. Don't fool yourself that you are a person without enemies. Even the spider in your house is your enemy. He's not paying mortgage. What's he doing in your room? And the Bible says spiders, they take hold of palaces. I was speaking to... A friend, we haven't talked for about 30 years or more than 30 years. He said, oh, pastor, I have nine bedrooms, all en suite. I said, eh. I said, all your children are out. I said, so it's the spiders that you are cleaning every time in all the other bedrooms. <laughs> what are you doing with? He said, uh, pastor, I regret it. I, I never thought that my children would leave. Though he was well to do. I knew him, but we, are, we were close. Nine ensuite bedrooms in his house. Now it's only him and his wife. The way somebody's looking at me. <laughs> he did not, he had no vision for the future that the children come to pass, to go on. I told him, split the house into two. He said, ah, I said, listen, split the house into two, make it a duplex. You have five bedrooms or four bedrooms. Split the other one, create so that... Because what I knew with nine bedrooms, all en suite. And now your wife is the cleaner for rooms that they don't stay in. I said, you are happy, you are in blessed Africa if you were here when winter comes. And So let me end up with this. Whatever you are barren of, barren of love, barren of grace, barren of truth, barren of being the joy of the Holy Spirit, this is the day the Lord has made. You will rejoice and be glad. If you are still in idolatry, just one idol or the other that had just taken over, that praying is a struggle, you pray for five minutes. Lord, thank you, I'm going out now. Just help me, no accident in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that's all you pray. Lord, I'm going to work, make sure nothing happens. Because I've seen, you know, occupational hazard. Just help me, just help me, just help me in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, this food I'm eating, there's fish here. The bone must come out well. It shouldn't. <laughs> five, five. You don't pray for the kingdom. God, let the people I meet today see Christ in me. Give me the opportunity that I will be able to talk to them about eternal values. And that we are here. We have no continuing city. Lord, give me a word for somebody who is down in my office. Lord, this person has been sick in my office. Give me a word, a word, a word, a word. 
a word, Lord. Give me an anointing so that when I get there, she's not in the office, I will call and say, God just tell, told me to tell you that it is well with you. And they know you are Christian. Can you pray? At least this office, say yes. And you pray. Lord, you know, when you are a person that prays for the kingdom, then it will be well with you. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Because every day is a day of new beginnings. Every day. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has not come. But today, shall we stand? Shall we stand? It's a day to begin something new. Let grace, let truth, let love, Whatever, a day that something good will start in your life because God created this day with you in mind. He created this day with you in mind. He created this day with you in mind. And your past does not matter. It's your present and your future. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad because God made it with you in mind. God made it with you in mind. God made it with you in mind. I want you to say, God, thank you. God, thank you. Though my sins may be as scarlet, like you delivered Abraham from idolatry, like you delivered Jonah, like you cleansed Isaiah, here I am. Let there be a new beginning with me. And if you are barren, you don't have truth, you don't have joy, the joy of the Holy Ghost. If your bones are creaking, there is sickness. Just say, God, this is the day you have made and I have joy in it because you created this day with me in mind. There is healing from you. From the balm of Gilead, there is healing, there is deliverance. If you had a nightmare yesterday, oh, say yesterday is gone. Last night you had a nightmare is gone. This is a new day. Say, Lord, create in me and create around me. Oh, let your angels take charge so that the devil will not be able to reach out to me anymore because it's the day you have made and I rejoice in it and I give you praise and I give you praise. Oh, if your prayer life is down, say, God, thank you. I can now pray for others. I can think of others and be a blessing to others because your blessings on my life is to bless other people also. So it's a day that he has made that you may rejoice because you are doing God's will. You may rejoice because he activates in you his strength, his goodness, his love, his power, his might. Yes, his majesty. You should not be the same again. You should not be the same again. You should not be the God loves you. God loves you with an eternal love. He loves you with an eternal love. He loves you with an eternal love. Just raise your hand and say, God, thank you for today. Say, thank you for today. Say, thank you for today. You made this day with me in mind. You want me to rejoice. You have a blessing for me, a truth for me, an energy for me, a direction for me. For me, a guidance for me, a goodness for me, and mercy where it is needed for me. Oh Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. There is none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you. The God of all creation, the God of all goodness, the God of all mercy, the God of all grace, the God of wonders, the God of wonders, the God of blessing, the God of blessing, the God of blessing, the God of blessing, the God of blessing. There is none like you.